Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Onward with Henri, and I'm your host, Henri Kompen. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, some of the things that we've got going on right now with uh, Yusun Shin, some of the other uh, achievements we've uh, accomplished in 2017, and also talk about where we're headed in 2018. But before I get to all that, um, you know, this is, uh, this is a really great time of the year for me because uh, now that I'm not doing conventions as much i've been um taking the time to inspire myself with like different um comics and movies and tv shows i just finished watching the season finale of mr robot and it's just amazing it was such a great episode such a great season um i don't know if you're watching it but if you are i won't spoil anything for you and speaking of spoilers this morning i was uh just scrolling on facebook and this dude just totally, totally ruined the latest Star Wars movie for everyone in like two sentences and posted on Facebook. Ruins the whole goddamn movie for everyone. Ruined it for me. I won't spoil it for you, but I'm just saying it was it was pretty it was pretty funny how he did it. And I, I, I don't really, you know, I'm not really excited to, about this new Star Wars movie, but um glad to see people joining in. This is great. We already got three people in. Um, so I was just going to tell you guys a little bit about what I've been up to, and then uh, I'll get into, um, you know, what I'm working on. So uh, I don't know if you're into video games or not, but right now I'm playing this game called uh, Valkyria Chronicles on PS4. And I really love this game. If, I don't know if you guys ever played um, uh, Vandal Hearts, which was like a tactile, tactical RPG uh, on the PS1, but... That was just a really great game because like every single stage felt like a like a chess match, and this game uh, picks up that same uh, concept and like really um, brings it into kind of like a World War II esque like setting, but it's not World War II; it's like this fantasy world or whatever. And uh, man, we're, we're getting a lot of people joining, and this is fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Lots of great friends here. Jennifer, I haven't talked to you in a long time. Leanne, how you doing? Good to see you. Simon, always a pleasure to see you, mate. And uh, my wife's even in here. Thank you, honey. I love you. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I've been playing this. I got it really cheap because uh, I don't like to spend a lot of money on myself. I'm actually, like, saving up to, like, get my kid, like, a bunch of video games that, you know, he wants he wants to play. And my wife's not really happy that he's playing so many video games. But, you know, dad's got to have his time with uh, his son. So we're actually going to be pick, um, giving him uh, Super Mario Odyssey on the Switch, and I'm hoping he'll like it. But uh, in terms of books, what's going on, Alex? Good to see you, sir. I, I owe you a follow-up email. Um, I've been reading this book uh, that I just got. I, 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 was at, I was at a comic shop last Monday, and I was just browsing around uh, looking at stuff, and I came across this book called Eisner Miller. And um, I didn't pick it up right away, but then a couple days went by, and I'm like, you know, I really need um, some holiday reading. So I decided to pick this book up, and it's just this uh, – well, how many pages is it? It's about 350-page book, and it's, it's interviews between uh, – it's not even an interview. It's actually just an ongoing conversation between – uh, two of comics' greatest uh, legends, uh, Will Eisner and Frank Miller, and they're just talking about all kinds of different things when it comes to laying out comics, um, you know, composing story. You know, they're talking about different methods of actually like drawing and stuff like that. And it's it, it's been an interesting like uh, look at you know how these guys work, how they how they you know how they used to think. Will Eisner's no longer with us, but um, I'm a huge fan of him. He actually was a huge inspiration with, uh, with, for a book that I just completed. And um, I, while I was working on it, I, 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 was, uh, I was introduced to his work through um, uh, my editor, Jan DeMattis. And uh, I picked up, he, he told me that if I wanted to, uh, you know, have that book turn out well, that I should read a, a Will Eisner's graphic novel, Contract with God. And here it is for, for those of you who haven't seen it. And uh, it's just a really good book. I mean, Eisner has always seen himself as, as more of like a reporter. And uh, he basically, you know, tells stories as, he's, as he remembers them. And, and this book is, it, it, it has a very personal touch to it, which was uh, a huge help for me while I was working on one of my projects. So what's going on, Kurt? What's going on, buddy? Good to see you on here. 
So um, anyway, yeah, Eisner's, uh, he was a huge inspiration for me, and um, it, I, he helped me a lot with uh, my latest graphic novel that I just released. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but it's called Mark's A Tale of Neglect, and uh, this book is about my grandfather's life. Um, he was a Russian Jewish soldier uh, that fought the Nazis uh, during World War II, and he, he was fighting on uh, the Soviet, for the Soviet Army. And um, he was basically shooting down uh, planes from the sky from these big trucks that were armed with, like, uh, cannons and machine guns and things like that. And uh, after a year of being on the front lines, he was thrown into a Russian prison camp and, where he spent the next five years of his life. And it's uh, I'm really it, it, this this was a really uh, this book took a long time to put together. It was about a five year project. Um, I brought three different uh, artists on board to um, uh, tackle our duties to to give the book a, a a different feel for each chapter. So like the first chapter um, has art by an artist named Nick Bell, who's shown here. And uh, Nick has been working in comics mainly as a colorist over the years, and um, he took a step back and said he wanted to illustrate. So um, after looking at his portfolio, I I hired him, and he, he just does such amazing work, and he colors his own stuff, and, and he just really gave it a, um, a very storybookish feel, which is kind of how I wanted my grandfather's youth to uh, to look like. You see, I mean, you know, whenever we look back on our childhood, that's, that's kind of what it is. And, uh, you know, in, in the darker moments of his life, like when he was in the prison camp and, um, you know, when he was uh, about 14 years old, uh, he was actually, uh, his father was killed by, by Stalin. And there was a huge, uh, I don't know if, how many of you guys know uh, much about Russian history, especially during the World War II era, but, um, you know, Stalin, he, uh, he arrested and killed millions of people and he was just uh he was very ruthless on that front and my grandfather my great grandfather was one of the victims uh of his so you know the second chapter and the fifth chapter of the book have more of like a bill sinkevich style feel to him uh if you're a fan of him of his art style you'll like you'll like what you see here and then the third and fourth chapter of the book is um mainly focused on uh what occurred on the front lines of uh, of war and, and really all I had to work off of were a couple stories that my grandfather was telling me while he was pretty much on his deathbed and um, I had to kind of piece everything together but I, I was very fortunate because I had family helping me out with it and um, it's not like with Yi Sun Shin I have to kind of not only am I doing research but I have to kind of like uh, decrypt a bunch of stuff because it's all in Korean so I have to get it translated I have to verify it I have to cross check it so it, it, it was a, a different uh, it was a different approach to research with um, writing about a family member because I have all these people who knew him around me and the most difficult thing I would say I had and the reason why this project took so long was because I had to make sense of the information in a way that made sense to me because the way I remember my grandfather is going to be different than how um, say my uh, my father remembered him or how my mother remembered him. So I had to make this a very personal story, and that was something I didn't feel very comfortable with. I didn't like seeing myself inside a book. But uh, anyway, before I move on uh, to the next thing, here's this is a little gruesome, but hey, we'll, we'll cover it up for you all you kids out there. But uh, this is the third art style, um, and it was uh, illustrated by Dan Doherty. He's a local Chicago comic book artist slash writer slash publisher. Dan does a bunch of different things. He's a very talented guy. Real honor working with him. And we put this wonderful book out. It's uh, it's called Mark's A Tale of Neglect. You can buy it on Amazon.com or you can go to uh, my web store and buy it here. I'll just drop the link here for everybody. And uh, feel free to, to come on there and, uh, you know, pick up the book. I'll sign it for you and ship it right to your front door. Oh, yeah. Well, Kurt also knew my grandpa, too, which is pretty funny. <laughs> my <laughs> Kurt, uh, Kurt Imhoff and I are very good friends, and uh, we, we grew up together, and he has a, he has a very funny story of my grandfather. <laughs> He'll be more than happy to tell it to you if you see him at a convention. Kurt uh, often comes with me to uh, Chicago conventions 
and helps out over there. If you guys are local to the area, I'm sure you've met him. He's a wonderful guy, one of my best friends. Um, so uh, I'm sure most of you are interested in hearing about what we got going on with Yisun Shin. And um, this is kind of what uh, encouraged me to, to start coming out here and talking to you guys directly, uh, which is not something I'm very used to. So if uh, you have any criticisms of me, you know, please don't go too hard on me. But anyway, so uh, with Yisun Shin, we had a really awesome year. I mean, we just totally crushed it. We, uh, we went to 12 different conventions, and we sold out at every single one of them. We did the 1500 comic book battle a second year in a row, and it was just, I mean, we've broken 70, over 72,000 sales now. And, you know, Yisun Shin, it just, it's, it's growing and growing. We reprinted the first four issues of the book. I, I'm, I'm now reprinting the fifth issue. This is uh, just a, a, a copy that uh, the uh, printer sent to me. And the only difference with this uh, next printing is uh, we actually moved, um, I moved my uh, co-writer's credit to the, uh, to the top writer right underneath mine. Uh, David Anthony Kraft has been working with me on Yisun Shin for ever since we pretty much started. Um, and uh, we're, we're plotting together. We're always, uh, you know, uh, discussing what our next plans are for the series. And uh, next week we actually have a huge, huge announcement, and it's going to blow the lid off of everything. It's something we've been working on for the last year, um, and uh, it's our first licensing deal, and it's a big one, and we're really, we're really excited to share it with you. So um, stay tuned because on Monday I'm going to be releasing the commercial Monday morning. It's going to go live, and you'll have a chance to purchase uh, whatever it is that we're announcing right at our website. So what's going on, Janet? Good to see you. Janet is my old manager when I used to work at uh, EB Games uh, in, in Old Orchard, which used to be called EBX. And she was awesome. I love her. She's, uh, she, she trained me well in, in the arts of uh, retail and, and, and everything. So, you know, if you see my, my charming face at a convention, it's all Janet who, who, who showed me how to, how to be around people. Well, anyway... Um, so going on, uh, you know, we, we sold a lot of books this year, which is just fantastic. We hit up a lot of great shows. We got a great convention uh, set up for next year. So um, I just, you know, if you're if you're tuning in right now, here are some uh, some of the shows that I'll you can catch me at in 2018. And who's that? That's Keith, dude. Oh, hardest working man in comics. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I always like when people tell me that because it's you know. It, it, Whenever you're, whenever you're working in a creative field, you don't always uh, know whether or not people are, uh, uh, can see what you're doing, and, and it really means a lot. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. So um, basically the conventions I'll be going to next year, I'm going to be hitting up. Uh, my, my season starts a little bit earlier this year, which I'm really excited about because I don't like being at home. I like being out there with you guys. Uh, so I'm my first conventions in mid February. I'm going to be heading out to Kansas City for Planet Comic Con. This will be my fourth year there, and it's just one of my my best shows. I love going out there. Um, I'm really excited about it. After that, I'll be heading back to uh, Seattle for Emerald City Comic Con. You're always going to find me there. That's a great show. I love going out there. Lots of people, and um, excited to to bring out uh, Fallen Avenger. This is our our latest uh, the latest trade for for E. So. If you're going to be at that show, you can pick it up then. We've got some great deals going on. Or you can pick it up right now on our, on our uh, web store. It's up to you, whatever, whatever you choose to do. And I'll, I'll talk more about Fallen Avenger in just a bit here. Uh, uh, after Emerald City, I'm uh, going to be heading out to uh, Awesome Con in uh, D.C., and I'll be staying there with uh, my, my sales captain, Kevin Hines. He's going to be helping me out at that show, I hope. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that one. That, that was a, that show was a, was a was a real surprise to me because I was a little worried about how it could end up. And um, I had to cut back on some shows this year. Uh, the biggest one I had to cut back on was San Diego, and um, the reason was because uh, my wife and I had our our second kid, so <laughs> I got tied up for that. But uh, after Awesome Con, I'm uh, planning to do C2E2 again. That's a, that's a local show for me, so I'll be there. I'm going out to Phoenix again. That's, that's uh, one of my top performing shows. I love going out there. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back uh, from uh, Denver Comic Con. I applied a couple weeks ago, and it looks like they're still reviewing uh, who they want to, to appear at their show. And um, 
you know, we'll see. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can get in for that one. Uh, I'll be back at San Diego this year for sure. I'm looking forward to that. It, it, it was miserable missing out on that one last year or this year. We're not even in 2018 yet. Um, I'll be back for Boston Comic Con next year. I'm looking forward to heading out there. Boston's a great city. Um, I'll be doing Wizard World Chicago because, you know, again, it's a local show and I'll be here. And uh, I'll be heading out to Baltimore Comic Con. It's a show I've done for a couple of years now and having a, having a fun time out there. And then I'll be returning to New York Comic Con where, yes, I will do the 1500 comic book battle for a third year in a row. And, uh, you know, that should really drive our sales up closer to um, 100,000 sales. So I'm really looking forward to that. Dak is on, uh, it, it has joined our chat. I'm, I'm really glad everyone, David Anthony Kraft is my, my co-writer and editor on the series. We do everything together. He is uh, the man with the plan. He has taught me everything I know about comics. He has taught me everything I know about editing, everything I know about production, everything. So uh, always, always a pleasure to have, have Dak around. Um, so those are the conventions I'll be heading out to. I also want to head back out to Alamo City Comic Con. Uh, I haven't been out to San Antonio for a couple of years, but they kind of did some, uh, there were some scheduling conflicts this year, so unfortunately I wasn't able to attend it. Uh, there is one other show that I have been invited to as a special guest, but um, until all those details are uh, inked, I, I, I'm going to hold back on, on sharing the news with you guys. But uh, it looks like uh, someone wants me to actually come to their show and is willing to, to, to put me up for the, the whole time I'm out there. So I'm really interested, and, and, and I hope to, to build some uh, new readers out there, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So, yeah, there's that. And um, now I want to talk a little bit about what we've got going on. So um, I, I don't know if you guys have uh, went to our uh, – visited our web store. Um, I'm going to just throw the link back here. Com slash there we go. So um, on our shop, if you scroll down below all the Yves and Shin stuff, uh, you can purchase marks on there, and you can also purchase some other specialty items. So David Anthony Craft is here right now. Him and I last year worked on uh, this Tales from the Crypt story for paper cuts. They, they got uh, the license, and they, they relaunched the series. And Dave and I did the middle story. And we had to uh, crunch down on this and get it done while we were on deadline for, for Fallen Avenger 4, which is uh, the uh, issue that completes the second arc of Yusin Shin. But anyway, we, we were given this opportunity to work on Tales from the Crypt, and uh, we wanted to do a story that was kind of grounded in reality and really scary. We really wanted to scare the crap out of our audience, which is a very difficult thing to do in comics. So um, I tried to make it more psychologically uh uh, scary than I did like with you know showing visuals and stuff we did I should say sorry Dak was uh, with me the whole time he actually kind of like took everything I had I had all the pieces and then Dak basically just cut off, trimmed all the fat off and, and and focused on what was most important and you know he, he poured a lot of himself into the story and it was just really great um, and uh, I had so basically what happened was I after the book came out I contacted the publisher Brian how you doing man good to see you Shameless plug, you better you better come in. Everyone, I just want to let you know, I ripped off Brian K. Morris. He had his own show on Facebook, and I'm like, that's such a goddamn good idea that I said I'm going to do the same thing. And Brian is just such a wonderful guy. He's totally supportive, and he's a great guy. Thanks for joining us, Brian. So um, Tales from the Crypt. Uh, you, I, I managed to uh, get uh, a couple copies of the book from the publisher. And um, I, I, they, I, I, I uh, started selling them at conventions, and they started moving really fast. And I realized quickly uh, that this book is out of print. You know, like the publisher, I'm not going to be able to get more copies of this. So actually, the book I'm holding here, I only have like four copies of it left, and not a lot of comic shops uh, have this book. So um, getting it is, is kind of like a rare thing. So you can pick it up right now. There's uh, four different variant covers. Um, one of them is done by uh, Dean Hayspiel, and he signed the book. Um, I don't think it's going to be very hard for uh, any of you guys to get any of these books signed if you buy them and, uh, and, and take them to a convention with you. Um, you could visit our website, and uh, there's more information of it there. But uh, the real pride and joy for me this year uh, – thanks, Brian. I love you too, buddy. Thank you. And uh, shameless plug, yes, please. You know, I, I actually have your book. 
downstairs because I got my big pile of books down there, but I will put it up in, in the next episode. What was really great is last time I tuned into Brian's show, he just like, you know, pulled out a copy of uh, my book and started, you know, uh, talking me up and everything. He's just a really wonderful guy. He's working on a bunch of different things. He just uh, put down a link to his Amazon profile. You can learn more about him and what he's up to. Brian is just, he's just fantastic. Just a really great guy. I, I had a, a, the pleasure of uh, having dinner with him and his wife, Cookie, when I was in uh, Indiana earlier uh, in July for a convention called Indie PopCon, which was kind of crazy. Ah, but buy on your stuff first. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, next time I will have your book, and I'll show everybody. I just picked up Brian's book. He has a, he has a book called uh, Skyman. And it's actually based off of like a golden age character that he secured the, the rights to. And he, he wrote like a novel that was just like fun golden age, uh, you know, uh, adventures. And um, yeah. So anyway, um, I uh, we back in uh, the, the biggest project and the biggest achievement for the year, I think, uh, is uh, my second graphic novel, Yusin Shin Fallen Avenger, which uh, is the sequel to. Yusin Shin Warrior and Defender, which is soon going back to press because we have sold so many goddamn copies of this book. It is ridiculous. This book is about to uh, sell through its 5,000 uh, unit uh, order. And uh, on top of that, we sold a ton of copies of the Korean edition. This book has sold over 8,000 copies. All right. It, it, it is just going, you know, crazy. And we're reprinting it and it's going to look beautiful. There's nothing that's going to change other than the fact that we're going to move David Anthony's credit up here because that's where it belongs. David Anthony Kraft and I, we, we do everything together on Yusin Shin. He is just as much a part of it uh, as I am, and uh, he's, he's really working behind the scenes. You know, I would like to he's, – he's, he's the Shep Gordon to my Alice Cooper, if you guys uh, uh, know of um, – uh, Superman, which is a really great Netflix show. Uh, you don't know what I meant by that reference. Well, anyway, Dave and I, for the last five years, have been cooking up Fallen Avenger, and I'm really, really proud of this book. This this turned out so fantastic. Um, you know, in in the middle of the Yisun Shin arc, uh, our artist had to leave uh, Yisun Shin because uh, he got other work at uh, a different publisher called Dynamite, and he started working on The Shadow. And now recently, they put him on uh, a crossover of Shadow and Batman. So now Giovanni Timpano, who illustrated the first five issues of v Shin, is now working on Batman. This is his cover art right here. It's uh, a book I've been reading and really enjoying. Gio's, like, on top of his game with this book. He's doing really, really wonderful stuff here. I'll show you some art from the inside. Here's, like, a, a nice little fight scene he has with, uh, with Robin here. And you can check them out online, too. Uh, you know, if you're not friends with Gio, you know, friend him on Facebook. He's really one of the nicest people I know. Uh, he's, he's my brother. I, you know, we, we've, we've done conventions together, and we've been through hell together. And, you know, he's just he's, he's trekking forward, and I'm so happy for his success. I mean, you know, going into – going starting from Eastern Chin and then graduating to Batman is really uh, something I'm very proud of. So um, in the middle of this second arc, we lost our artist. We had to hire a new artist and to keep up with, with what Gio did. And it's like, how do, you, how do you pick up the pace from that? Well, you know, luckily I had Dave with me because Dave was able to help guide me in a direction of finding an artist that could keep up with the style that we established in the first arc. Because the one thing I really hate about comics is when – you pick up a book and you see one style and you expect that style to be persistent uh, as you're or consistent as you're as you're reading uh, the series. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, the art changes and it just pulls you right out of the story or the uh, or the writer changes or they, they go off and do some, you know, spinoff or uh, they, they have a filler issue. You know, um, we can't afford to do that with Yusin Shin. Yusin Shin needs to be consistent from beginning to end. And uh, we brought on a new artist in the middle of the second arc, which was really difficult to do, but we managed to pull it off and actually raise the bar for the whole series. And, you know, Fallen Avenger has been very well received. You know, it's a very dark book, yes, but, I mean, hell, who doesn't like dark shit? You know, it's like everybody's watching Game of Thrones and uh, Walking Dead and, you know, a bunch of other dark shows. You know, why not, why not pick up Yusin Shin Fallen Avenger? And what's cool about it is uh, it features a Ford by a really interesting guy. His name is Judd Reed. 
Um, he is the uh, champion of uh, the 100-man fight. So that's that's me and Judd. Uh, we met back in uh, 2016. That's us in Times Square in New York City. And uh, Judd, um, he is a Kyokushin karate master. And I discovered him through this documentary uh, called 100 Man Fight, where he basically, uh, it's basically like an hour long documentary about like his training leading up to the 100 Man Fight and then the actual event itself, which it's crazy. I mean, this dude went up against like 100 black belts. And in Japan, so this is not like, you know, this is not like one of those lame ass like karate, you know, tournaments. This is like the real deal. He was in Japan and he was fighting 100 black belts back to back to back, no pads, just taking straight bare knuckle punches to the body, you know, kicks to the legs. I mean, at the end of completing this impossible challenge, which I think only like 20 or more people completed, I mean, it was just a very, very few people have managed to do this throughout throughout history. Um, you, you just see his legs and they're just like all bruised up, you know, and uh, the, the amazing thing about Judd was, you know, you see people on uh, in a movie or you get to know them um, in front of the camera and, you know, you always wonder if they're the same way behind the scenes. And, um, you know, meeting Stan Lee was kind of like that, too, because it was like when I met him in, 20, in 2010, you know, I didn't uh, I didn't know if he was going to be a nice guy or if he was going to be an asshole. And he was exactly how he was. Uh, on screen behind closed doors. He was, he was the same, you know, he's the stand that we all know and love. And um, I wondered if that would be true with, with Judd, because for me, I feel like with Yusin Shin, um, Yusin Shin is such an a inspirational figure for me, and, the, and, and I've been fortunate enough to have people that inspire me, uh, you know, write an introduction about the work I've done on him. And it, it, it's people I admire that I, I sought out, because I guess it kind of gives me a sense of, um, accomplishment that I managed to not only uh, complete this work, but that I managed to get the attention of someone I, I, I people I truly respect. And Judd is definitely one of those people. I mean, he is he is a he, he lives by a very strict code, but uh, he he's just one of the nicest people in the world. And, and and part of that kindness comes from that code. And he's a true martial artist. He's a true warrior. He, he's just a really wonderful guy. He runs. A bunch of like crazy training camps in Thailand, and he go, he travels all around the world, and he's got his own book out. He, he wrote his own autobiography, and he self published the fucking thing. He self published it, and has moved like a bunch of copies because he goes to all these different um, seminars. He's been to like India, you know, Singapore. Uh, he goes to uh, you know London. He goes all over the place, and he, he's training with all these Kyokushin karate. Uh, people and he's he's teaching them like crazy stuff you know like <laughs> you know how to, how to become a better fighter and that world is just really intriguing to me I mean I, Kyokushin is one of the uh, most it, it, it's such a different type of karate than what we all know and um, I, I wish that there was a place I could I could learn uh, I could actually learn it but it's a little far from where I live so um, yeah I, I've, I've actually yeah, I'm a big fan of Jokish and Karate. Anyway, so uh, I asked Judd to write the forward to uh, Fallen Avenger. And uh, the cool thing about Fallen Avenger is just like Warrior and Defender, which contains a, a bunch of backup content, um, we did the same thing with Fallen Avenger, and we really kind of kicked it up this time. So um, I wrote about my experiences uh, in, in, in the first part of the backup content and uh, I write about how you know Judd inspired me and some of the cool things that happened for for East and Chin and some of the not so cool things that happened and how we managed to kind of work our way through it and uh, that's that's one of the things that's been really difficult about working in comics is you know you always want to portray a sense of um, uh, of achievement and that you know you're you're constantly headed upwards and onwards but it's not always the case, you know. Sometimes you you come across problems. Sometimes you come to a point where you may not even uh, be able to keep going because you know times are tough, and you have to be very proactive and very pragmatic about you know solving problems and, and, and pushing yourself forward. So um, that was something I really um, enjoyed reflecting back on and looking at where we are now. Um, after my backup piece, uh, Dak really wanted to kind of show people the kind of hell we went through 
So um, we had this piece called Blood, Sweat, and Tears, where we talk about some of the biggest challenges that we had um, in different issues of yeast and shin. And the thing that is so frustrating about working on this book, as much as I love it, is that we really want everything that to, to, we really want to give our audience uh, the best bang for their buck. And sometimes we'll, we'll stare at pages and we'll get layouts from the artist and it just won't look right. And it'll, it'll take us like days to figure out a solution to things. And it gets frustrating, but I mean, it's, 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 it's the, it's the stuff that nobody sees, you know? And it's like, while you're looking at this art and trying to analyze it, you know, time is going by, money's going, you know, you need to make money, you need to keep pushing things, and, it, and, and it's really difficult. So uh, that was something I, we also enjoyed, uh, you know, exploring more. And then um, rather than just interview uh, my team, which is what I did in Warrior and Defender, so you could get to know them more personally, I decided to kind of switch things up a little bit and, and talk more about my experiences working with the creative team on the book. There's, there's Dak right here, and uh, there's Gio again and uh adriana and you know kind of just give you guys a sense of um you know how we work and and, and what what goes into this book like how how this all comes together and it, it's a really good it's a really good look in, into how uh the creative team uh works and and how they do everything and another cool thing about it is we got all new art uh, uh character profiles and never before seen stuff so it's all just stuff that uh, I'm really proud of, and uh, I hope you'll check it out. Um, I have a really great deal going on at conventions where if you buy the first two graphic novels, if you're new to the series and you haven't, you haven't jumped on board yet, you can get Warrior and Defender, Warrior and, Defender <laughs> and Fallen Avenger for just 45 bucks. So, uh, and you, you can uh, pick it up right now on our website, and uh, I'll just leave the, the shop link here. And so now, uh, what what are we doing right now? Like, what is going on when I'm not selling comics and I'm not sitting here promoting stuff and or reading books or playing video games? Um, we are wrapping up covers, all of the covers for our final arc of Yi Sin Shin, Hunter and Destroyer. And as a as a treat to you guys for for tuning in here, I have uh, I'm going to leave uh, some art here for everyone. Let's see if. Uh, I downloaded it before I started this. Well, as soon as I finish this, I'll upload it and I'll let you guys uh, take a look at it. Um, it is uh, the first cover for uh, Hunter and Destroyer. This is our uh, third and final arc of Yusun and Shin. And um, it's, uh, it's just going to be a, a total uh, roller coaster to the end. I'm really excited about working uh, on it and I'm excited to talk more to you guys about it and uh, I'd be interested in uh, answering any questions you guys might have at, at a later point about what we've done so far or where we're headed and I'm going to keep coming on here and talking with you guys so I'll be back uh, next week around the same time and uh, I hope to see you then. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it so much. I can't wait to see you next week.